with the blog eatingbuckets.com. And today I'm gonna to talk with you about a much asked, much anticipated topic, which is how much food do you need to grow to feed you and your family for an entire year? The reason that this question is asked so often is because it depends on what sort of an eater you are. If you're omnivorous, eat everything. Um, the, the topic changes compared to if you are plant-based and, and vegan, for example. However, one of the things that I continue to discover in this particular journey of growing food is quite simply that the more that you start to taste the food that you grow in your garden, the more of it that you want to grow. I have learned over time that all of the online charts are there really as just a guide. And it's really hard for somebody to present that information for an entire audience that all eats differently, right? So you have to create those guidelines for yourself based entirely on what you like to eat and how much money you have to work with. My general rule is to grow more than you think you need and to grow more than people tell you to. The reason that I say this is because I'm now five years in and this has been true for me. Every single year I've grown more and every single year I've eaten more. Every single year I've used everything that I've grown. This is the first year, this past year in all of 2020, that I grew enough to fill an entire like um, chest freezer and to can food unless you have a giant thriving small farm or a giant thriving garden. Um, in your backyard right now, you don't yet know how good it's gonna taste and it tastes so good. It just, it's like, it's like if you think about going to your favorite gourmet restaurant, in there is like an, a sort of a, an awareness of these key cooking, you know, methods like incorporating salt and fat and heat and, um, and acid, right? So salt, fat, heat, and acid. That's like, please go read that book. Um, really what that's looking at is all of the things that you add to a meal to make it sing. So in our lives, we don't um, go without fat. We end up using a lot of uh, like, you know, grass fed, cultured butter, tons and tons of olive oil. I go through so much olive oil and coconut oil and avocado oil and sunflower oil. We are not a low fat, fat household. Um, so when I'm talking about like loving my, you know, cabbage and beans and, um, and zucchini, chances are it's like drenched in oil and salt and pepper and vinegar, right? So on some of the, um, on some of the charts that I've looked at, they, they say you should grow two hills of cucumbers. That's basically three seeds per hill. When you, when you plant a cucumber plant, you'll often sort of like hill up the earth and then put some seeds in there. And usually it's three to three to four seeds um, and that's two. So it's essentially like six to eight plants per year. I am gonna be upfront with you and a lot of you will think that this is overwhelming. I will plant um, a lot of seeds. I will plant probably a hundred cucumber seeds. I know that sounds crazy, but we use them. And when you think about this, it's because we slice them up and we put them on our sandwiches. We slice them up and put them on our salads. We'll have entire cucumber salads, cucumber onion pickles. I will make so many jars of pickles to give away and to eat that in the end, I never have enough. The same for your zucchini. Zucchini is one of those things that people say you will just grow too much of. I have never grown too much zucchini because I love cooking with it. I will make an amazing zucchini soup that freezes super well. I'll make zucchini spear pickles, uh, zoodles, which is just like, you know, um, spiralized zucchini when it's fresh. I grate it with a Quasinart and pack up the freezer with like bags and bags and bags of zucchini that I use for chili. I use it for um, homemade zucchini fritters that taste like they're just like straight out of the garden, fresh, um, and tons of soups. And so let's say some of the ones I like to work with are the Cash Machine and the Black Beauty. So this last year I grew about 150 to 200 zucchini and I used them all. I gave away a lot too. So that's another big thing. I started this all with the intention of growing enough food to give to food banks long ago. 
And what has happened is that the learning around, like if I feed my family, which we have now successfully done, don't have anything left to give away. So I've just been giving cash, like giving donations to the food bank. Um, and this year, what I want to do is a whole dedicated garden that's specifically dedicated to weekly donations to the food bank, because that just feels great. Let's talk about your roots. Beets, I do a lot of red and golden beets. I make a beet borscht that I freeze. It's amazing. I use all veggies from the garden. Okay. Um, also turnips. These are just like a standard golden ball turnip. I use a ton of those um, frozen and in mashes. When I, when I grow my carrots, I like to do like regular um, sort of orange, standard orange carrots. And then I like to do yellow and purple because they're just, they add a lot of interest. I use them in like um, multicolored um, uh, veggie pickles. It's just pretty, right? And people appreciate pretty when it comes to eating good food. All right, so rutabaga. Um, this is one of those things that I think is just like a really particular taste. I like them mashed and I like them roasted. Now here's another one. Here's something I want you to grow a ton of this year because they're so satisfying. You can grow radishes basically in 28 days. So they're incredibly productive, incredibly satisfying, and just like really a good way to get started because you feel so um, successful. And they come in all kinds of varieties. But if you go to Baker Creek Seeds, which is just rareseeds.com, you will find um, an Easter basket um, selection, which is all these multicolors like purple, yellow, um, red, watermelon, which is amazing. It'll grow as big as a giant turnip. Um, and they all are beautiful, beautiful, roasted and fried. Um, a fried radish in an immense amount of butter and olive oil with salt, with salt and pepper is like to die for. And I'm, I'm not just making that up. It's um, something that a lot of restaurants on my island are now uh, selling and people will show up and get it like to go. So um, do that. Okay, let's talk about some of your brassicas. The brassicas are really a cool thing because unlike your lettuces, they are sort of heavy hitting, um, they will grow in cooler weather and they will grow, they have sort of an extended um, growth cycle. So that brassicas are cabbages, think sauerkraut, um, slaws, cabbage wraps, um, broccoli, which this is a variety I really like. It's the Bell Star um, from Botanical Interests. Um, he will probably grow about 150 to 200 of these because for our family, our kids just love broccoli. And so we'll eat it fresh every single day. And then to freeze it and to um, actually like turn it into soups and stuff, you just use a lot of it. Same with cauliflower. I'm not actually like on the whole cauliflower bandwagon of like turning it into like pizza crust and pastas and stuff, but I do really love it roasted with, again, a lot of olive oil and salt and pepper, very like Italian roasted veggie variety. Um, and so like some of the charts I've seen say grow five of these a year, like that's basically five heads of cauliflower. I don't know about you, but if I went to the grocery store, I would probably buy, if I could, like if I could buy anything I wanted, I'd probably buy a cauliflower for three nights a week and I would make cauliflower soup or maybe mashed cauliflower or roasted cauliflower. So I grow a lot more of that. Romanesco, we grew a ton of this. Life. They're just beautiful and they taste amazing. So I'm going to grow a bunch more of that. So. Same with the cabbages, because I've recently discovered um, like really good fermented kraut. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make a ton of that. All right, let's just dive into lettuces really quick. Cause what I'm wanting you to think about is the difference between things you can preserve and save and grow long cycle versus things that are sort of short cycle. Lettuces are short cycle. They really work well in your like spring, late spring up to early fall, sometimes late fall with your romaines and some more hardy lettuces. These are the things that are just automatic fresh goodness, right? And there's something that just don't do well, generally speaking, in the winter, unless you have a greenhouse or hothouse, which we'll have a whole nother session about that. But um, when you're growing lettuce, uh, one of the things that I like to remind people is that variety is so much more interesting. So this last year we did, um, a couple red varieties of lettuce. We had a speckled lettuce, which was really, really good. Um, we had a red velvet lettuce, which was gorgeous and super slow to bolt. Endive, radicchio, 
Butterhead. Lettuce is really cool because you can generally just um, harvest the outside leaves um, all summer long, all season long, and it will continue growing um, unless it becomes stressed due to lack of water or too much sun. You also have to be really honest with yourself. Like, are you a person who would love to sit down to a beautiful, homemade, absolutely fresh, lettuce salad covered in amazing dressing. If you are, then just grow more of it. It's so easy. Every 10 days, you just plant more. Um, here's um, an endive too. Okay, I wanna to talk to you about beans. So beans are one of those funny things that, um, this is covered in some soil from my garden, but this is an Antigua bean. It's a bush bean, it's a standard green bean. This is a half a pound of seeds. This is what I'm gonna plant this year. Um, the bush beans are super for cribbing. You don't have to build a trellis for them. You can plant them kind of all over the place. They do like to have sun. Um, I use them for fresh stir fries, fresh salads. I use them to can um, as spicy dilly beans. That's like my favorite, probably my favorite canned um, food of all time. They're just delicious. So I plant a ton of those, but if you're gonna talk about beans, you need to think about if you have enough space and if you want to like just dive in and grow enough beans to um, like dry and provide yourself with like all your black beans and pinto beans and like garbanzo beans that you make hummus with. Or if you're going to just buy those from a supplier and instead grow the stuff that you're going to eat fresh like in the pod. For now, that's where we're at. I don't know how long it will take for us to decide to grow all our own beans, but we're just growing the things that we really like to eat fresh. On that note, soybeans. So soybeans are a great cover crop. Beans in general, the cool thing that they do for your garden is they actually fix the nitrogen from the environment and put it in your soil. Nitrogen is so huge for a well growing plant in general. Some plants actually don't like nitrogen. For example, potatoes, you don't want to give them a ton of nitrogen. But for many of your, you know, standard garden fare, growing a cover crop and actually harvesting edamame or deciding to make tofu or soy milk on your own um, is really an awesome kind of achievement. So we're going to grow a ton of soybeans this year and um, really infuse some of our newer areas of our gardens with like a ton of nitrogen and then I'm going to work on um, like preserving edamame. Don't forget your herbs. Herbs have an incredible profile of flavor that you can throw into nearly every meal. I'm going to grow a ton more herbs this year because at, for example at the food bank um, they're really expensive. Think about going to your grocery store and like finding one of those little tiny like kind of clamshell um, or, or bags that's filled with a few herbs, and those are like around three to five dollars. Well, you know, I can buy an entire packet of parsley for three dollars and fifty cents, and then I can have enough to use for myself and to give away every single week. So, I want to drop up off fresh clippings of herbs to our food bank. Um, so, this is uh, French parsley, dill. You have to grow tons of dill for salads and for canning time. Same for everything that you um, that you work with that's savory. Um, lavender is something that I just really love to play with in cooking as well. Oregano, chives. I have quarts of dried chives that I add to my soups all the time. Um, sweet basil. So basil will produce like a beautiful forest that's really cool to work with for pestos and salads um, and dried as well. So white onions, don't forget about your onions. We'll have a whole nother post about onions and cilantro for your for your salsas. I want really quick to just touch on your um, hearty squash. A lot of people don't like squash. I happen to really enjoy working with it as like a creamy soup that I like to make in the winter or roast. Um, kabocha squash, look up kabocha squash. If you're not a squash lover, just try kabocha squash this year and see if that changes your mind. I love making an amazing kabocha squash like Thai curry out of it and it's it's incredible. Hopefully this is a good starting point. Um, do look to the different charts and then keep in mind that it's it's up to you how you choose to sort of execute on that and that for me uh, five years in I basically have thrown those charts a little bit to the wind and I grow 
a heck of a lot more than is recommended 